Whether you're someone who just uses a camera as a tool or whether you're in it for the technology, unless you're a Ken Rockwell of the world and all you do is take the JPEGs off your device and use them as is, fair play to you if that's the way you go for it. But most people will be using one of these and getting the raw files off it and processing them one way or other. So in this video, I'm just gonna go over the reasons why I think I can replace some of my current devices with this Samsung tablet. It's the Samsung Galaxy S11 Ultra. I've had a bunch of different devices in the past and I've got some frustrations with my current workflow. And it primarily resolves around being able to do different hobbies more easily around the house, sat on the sofa, without having to be sat at my main PC. So that's the thing. I'm going to set out some of my current workflow problems, some of the devices I've had in the past, and then I'll try and import some uh, images directly onto the tablet and see how that works out. For the past few years, I've had a bit of a conundrum. So I mostly use Lightroom. That's my main tool. I know it's not exactly cheap and Capture One maybe and some of the other tools might be better, but I really like the online library aspect of it where you upload your photos and you can edit them on your phone while you're at work or, you know. However, the situation I'm kind of in at the moment is I have on my main computer, I have a Lightroom Classic and on the rest of my devices, I use the Lightroom Creative Cloud version. So this is a bit of a problem because what I've noticed is if I upload the images in Adobe Lightroom Classic, the resolution on the other devices tends to be lower, but I've noticed that if I upload them on the Creative Cloud version, the resolution that I can export them at seems to be higher, which makes me wonder whether I should transfer entirely to the Creative Cloud version, because I'm sure there are features in the desktop version which are better for pro photographers, but are probably fine for my use case. Which has then led me to another problem. So why do I have all these devices? And the main reason is when I go away, I can't use my desktop to edit the images. And if you're away on holiday for a week, part of that time while you're sat down watching TV in the evening, could be sifting through the photos, you know, having a look at them, seeing which were good, bad, applying the edits. But then what I end up having to do is come back from the holiday and then load them into Lightroom Classic so that they're in the library at the full resolution. And then at the same time, offload them onto my network storage. And I'm not sure that's working out for me. What I have been using in the past, at one point I had a Surface RT, useless tablet, pointless, waste of money. Didn't deliver anything that Microsoft uh, promised. So then I bought a Microsoft Surface Book 2 and used that for a little while and it was okay. It wasn't as powerful as you'd imagine, quite heavy. What I tend to do is I buy new technology and I give the old ones to my partner. So she's using the Surface Book 2 currently. So then I upgraded about four or five years ago to a Samsung Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360. Uh, you'll notice throughout this, I really like transforming laptops and easel mode and uh, things with styluses. Um, and that was okay. And I originally got that so I could play some games while I was away as well. Uh, that laptop could not play games at all. It could edit pictures fine though. The screen resolution is only 1080p. The battery life now is shocking. In fact, when I took some B-roll of this before, the battery was basically dead and it hadn't been used. It had just been sat powered off for the last two days. I'm like, okay, well, though that laptop is a bit inconvenient to use. I couldn't take it to bed and edit pictures in bed or on the sofa. I need to be near a power socket. And before anyone mentions Apple, I'm sorry, I have a beef with Apple. I have history with Apple and there is no way I'm buying an Apple product ever. So that's that. So what have I gone and done? Well, I have a hunch that not the mid-range or low-range Samsung tablets, but the Ultra tablet now, because of the way they've implemented the desktop mode, and because so many things now are just apps, like Android apps, I have a feeling that I can potentially replace my laptop with a tablet, this tablet here. Um, and what I'm thinking is, okay, sure, there are certain things you can't do on Android tablets or ARM tablets, but I do have a TrueNAS server running Linux, which I can VPN into to run services on. I have a Windows desktop for gaming, which I can do things on most of the year when I'm not away. And I had been doing video editing. I'm gonna do a separate video on this. Um, I had been doing video editing on my desktop. The thing about that is DaVinci Resolve is great. Uh, and 
and the software I'm using on this isn't quite as good as DaVinci. We'll get into that in a separate video. But it means I can actually, I mean the previous video that I uploaded, it might, I don't know which order I'm gonna upload these in, but the, the first episode of Street Photography, I did all of that editing on this tablet and it was fine. And I did that on the sofa of all places. And I used one of my USB microphones to um, connect to this and it was like a USB Bluetooth, you know, it works fine. I could do the voiceover and I could edit the pictures. I edited the pictures on this tablet, exported them, added them into the video and uploaded them. And I have not tried, and we're gonna do this in a minute, I haven't tried importing images into it. Cause the thing is we're gonna enter a bit of a workflow situation then. And I'd be interested to hear how other people do things because the way I've locked in my workflow is I take my pictures, then I go to my desktop PC and I import them in Lightroom Classic onto my TrueNAS server. It then gets uploaded to the Adobe Cloud. Um, there's a small copy of it that comes on SnapBridge onto my phone that goes into Google Photos. I think it might even go into OneDrive. Uh, that might just be my camera roll, I'm not sure. So the, the photos are backed up everywhere in all sorts of different formats. But the main thing is they're in the Adobe Cloud so I can edit them on any, any device. So I'm wondering whether I could enter a situation where actually I just import them onto this and then periodically I can just copy them onto my NAS or maybe I could find a solution that syncs the folder onto the NAS. I just have to clean it up every so often. I'm just thinking of bar reducing barriers to entry of if one of the reasons why I'm struggling to make videos is I don't spend a lot of time sat at my main desktop which has got DaVinci installed. Well, there's an hour or two a day I'm watching TV uh, while I'm relaxing after work before I go to the gym where I can just edit videos and do stuff on this device. I'll, I'll maybe, I'm gonna do a separate video as well on just replacing a laptop. Uh, that's gonna take longer. I need to figure out exactly how that's gonna work. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and import some pictures that I took recently here from my Nikon Z6 onto this. Um, now I'll, Show the screen recording. Now the thing is, there is, if I go to the uh, files thing, in fact we'll use this, I quite like using this, um, there is a network storage option and in fact we can see here there's um, photography things So most of my, uh, I think, I th it started off as Google, yeah, here we go, all the rest of my uh, images that I've taken are actually in this folder on the network. Um, I used to use, um, it's called DS, Google Temp because I used to use um, the Google Backup and don't bother anymore. I just back up the, the, the pictures from SnapBridge. So let's plug this in and see what happens. So camera on, because that's the only way to get the images off it. And what will be interesting here is because when I tried to do this on my uh, laptop, it actually didn't work very well. Right, so plugged in. Okay, straight away it asks us to choose an app for USB device. Lightroom. Cool, right. So the, yeah, these are the pictures. And as you can see, there's, there's RAW and JPEG. So, oh great, it, lets, it actually lets us get rid of the JPEG and PNGs. We don't want that. So let's just select all. Now, where is, where is this gonna save this? If I just click add, oh cool, right. So I wanna add them to this catalog. I don't know why it's called DSR. I think I misspelled it. I, maybe, is this just uploading them directly to... I need to find out where these files are being copied to so that I can move them out. I'm, I imagine there's probably a folder on the device somewhere because I don't want to just upload them to Lightroom and I want to copy on my NAS as well. If you can hear that in the background, my cats have been scrapping all day. I don't know what is going on with them. Um, so it's copied successfully, now remove your USB cable. Um, all right, we'll figure out whether those are stored in a minute. Well, it has, has brought them in. Question is, can we see? So usually, obviously, in, um, in a desktop version of this, you would be able to just see where they're saved on the device. So that's a question that remains to be answered. You know, where, where are these, uh, where are these saved? There's no files with Neff. So that's something for me to look into. But on the face of it, I can get the files into Lightroom. And that is one of the main things that, that's a dog that would not do what he was told to do. What it looks like is when you import the photos in the uh, Creative Cloud app, it just goes straight into Creative Cloud. Uh, it doesn't save them on the device at all. 
So what that means realistically is when I'm away on holiday or whatever I'm doing, periodically I'll just have to move the, the NEF files off the ca camera onto the my network storage. And realistically, I can, I can never do that. When I get back from the holiday, I've got quite a large card in the camera. I very rarely fill it up. So if I end up getting into a situation where the, the card is nearly full, then yeah, I'll have to take some action, maybe move them on. I've, I've put a 512 gigabyte uh, micro SD card in the tablet, mostly so I can uh, move the camera. So when I've finished recording this now, I'm going to move the video from that directly into this using using the USB cable, and then put that into Luma Fusion and start editing the video. I'll just have to periodically go through and move the NEF files off the the card and then put them into the micro SD card. And then when I get home, I can just move the entire folder uh, onto my network storage. So then I've got a backup of it at least. So I think for me, while it wasn't super cheap, RRP of these is about 1100 quid. Um, this is the S11 Ultra. The equivalent of a Galaxy book that I was going to buy is more like 15, 1600 quid now. They're getting quite expensive. Uh, while you could put a NVMe drive extra in, in that laptop, it's cheaper to put the micro SD cards in this and it's easier to swap them out as well. And by the way, if you've been hearing my dog walk around the kitchen eating stuff off the floor the entire time, I apologize. His, it's been mildly doing my head in, but it's okay. He's, he just wants to hang out. Um, so what was I saying? I'm just distracting myself. In all other ways, this will be a superior experience because the battery life will be a lot longer when I'm just editing photos and editing videos. Um, I can use it easier just with the hand and the stylus if I want to, or I can use this, this keyboard here or, when I first got it, I had a different um, case and I was using uh, this. This is a great keyboard, by the way. Uh, it's Keychron K1 uh, V6. Excellent keyboard if you're into, into that. Um, I was using this with it. Using, in fact, I'll put some B-roll up of uh, how I was using this before I got this keyboard case here. Um, it was a very heavy case though. It was significantly cheaper than uh, the Samsung keyboard case, but it was very heavy. Um, but the main thing for me is that the battery won't be dead every time I pick, pick it up, hopefully. I love styluses, the other one was touch screen anyway, but this will be easier just to put in an easel mode and I can just sketch away or whatever. And everything now is apps. And the other main thing is, you know, if for some reason I have, if this breaks, my phone got another Android device, which has got a copy of all of my main sort of banking apps and, all, you know, other things which I need. Authenticators for work, authenticators for getting into different accounts. It's nice to have a backup device. And I realized recently I didn't have one. But all things told, I think I can use this for photography. We've just proven that I can get the pictures in directly into the Creative Cloud, which hopefully means there'll be a higher resolution when I'm exporting on other devices as well. That's all I want at the end of the day. Will I miss that this isn't a main Windows PC? Well, I have a Steam Deck for games. You know, I've got, a, as I said, a Linux server to sort of virtualize things on. I could create a remote desktop on there. And okay, the cat's joining in on the background noise now. I think he's telling me to wrap this up. So would I recommend doing this? Potentially. I think it will possibly annoy some people. Obviously it's not a full size keyboard. There isn't a trackpad on this. You would potentially have to use a touchscreen, which is fine for me, but other people might be irritated by it. Everyone's used to it with phones though now, so you know. If you buy the cheaper tablets, you'll probably have a bad experience in that it's very difficult to, it's not as easy to multitask. Like with, with a screen, this is a 14, 14 and a bit inch. Uh, display which I figured is large enough to it's large enough to get stuff done on it It's easier to see the details of the pictures if you're on a smaller tablet You might get more frustrated and if you start getting frustrated with something then you're not going to use it That's what I found. I, I had smaller laps uh, so I had smaller tablets in the past and I just got frustrated and didn't use them. I'm going to do a couple more videos, I think. Uh, I'm going to use this now as my primary video editing device. I'm going to use it as my primary laptop. My wife will be getting the hand-me-down Galaxy Book 2 Pro 360 to replace the Surface Book, which has had uh, years of abuse. And then, you know, I just will have to hope that this... this <laughs> doesn't start annoying me in one way or other. So, uh, I mean, if there's anything that you are you have questions about, maybe it's something you've thought about using a tablet or, instead of a laptop these days. I mean, some people, you probably just get iPads when you... I'm going to stop rambling now. So instead of rambling, in, I'm going to stop. But if you have some questions about this setup, you're interested in, I can always test them. Or, you know, I could always check it out and let you know. 
Um, so feel free to drop something in the comments. Otherwise, I'm going to get editing this video now, and then I will find out what it's like to fully replace DaVinci Resolve, which I wasn't properly utilising anyway. I, I missed the timeline features of the DaVinci already, that LumaFusion has got a magnetic timeline, which is seems like you always have to have the main timeline completed, and I don't like that. I like to be able to dot my bits everywhere, but let's not worry about that for now. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, any comments, drop them below, and if not, I'll catch you later. See ya.